what is going on here? Because it was clear we were going to war. And I thought it was a very thin case. They were taking bits and pieces, cherry picking intelligence to make their case for war. Her husband shared that view. And four months after the invasion of Iraq, he went public in an opinion piece in the New York Times called What I Didn't Find in Africa, alleging that pre-war intelligence was twisted to exaggerate the Iraqi threat. At the time, his wife was still undercover at the CIA's Joint Task Force Iraq. Did you ever talk to him, weigh the pros and cons of going public with this? Uh, no. He had thought long and hard about doing this before writing this piece, this op-ed piece. It had nothing whatsoever to do with me. You never for a moment thought this could potentially jeopardize my career? It's called living your cover. This had nothing to do with what I was doing. He but was part of the debate. Admit it, it comes awfully close to what you were doing, even covertly. I mean, you were trying to ascertain if Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. He's writing an article saying it's really not valid, this one assertion. I mean, can't right, you see how those two things might collide in a very dangerous way? Listen, he had information that was first-hand information that was in stark contrast to the lie, the 16 words that appeared in the President's State of the Union address. He wasn't supposed to say anything? Two days after the opinion piece ran, the White House admitted the 16 words, quote, did not rise to the level of inclusion in a presidential speech. A week later, Valerie Plame's name and CIA affiliation were printed in a newspaper by conservative columnist Robert Novak. 18 years of meticulously crafted cover were gone in an instant. I can tell you all the intelligence services in the world that morning were running my name through their databases to see, did anyone by this name come in the country? When? Do we know anything about it? Where did she stay? Who did she see? And what would be the ramifications of that? Well, it's very serious. It puts in, in, in danger, if not shuts down, the operations that I had worked on. Did you ever hear about anything that happened to anyone with whom you had contact as a result of the leak? Yes, I have, and that's all I can say. Is it safe to say people were put in danger? There was a damage report done by the CIA. I never saw it. Uh, I certainly didn't reach out to my old assets and ask them how they're doing, although I would have liked to have. You probably can speculate about the damage, though. Mm -hmm. If you had to write your own damage assessment, knowing what you know, uh -huh. how serious would it be? It would be serious. It was so serious, the president promised to fire anyone involved in revealing her identity to the press. If somebody did leak classified information, I'd like to know it, and we'll take the appropriate action. An investigation was launched, but as it dragged on, the Wilsons hardly kept a low profile. Appearing at glamorous public events, political fundraisers for the Democratic Party, and in Vanity Fair magazine. You know, you're a covert CIA agent for X number of years, and suddenly, you know, you're in this Greta Garbo pose in your husband's Jaguar. It was more trouble than it was worth. And it was, I was not interviewed for the article. I was not identifiable. The damage had already been done. Do you regret the photo? You've had my answer. How did your boss react, Valerie, to that photograph? Poorly, <laughs> as uh, he, he had every right to do so. Um, he was caught unawares, and he gave me a really good chewing out, as I deserve to be. Can you understand how people just were turned off by that whole thing? They felt, gee, maybe she's enjoying her celebrity a little too much? Mm. Well, again, you have to ask, who are these people? What is their agenda? Why are they asking that? What about those who think you and Joe have become too partisan? Again, that's how it's, it's how the right has chosen to frame us. You have become very partisan, though. Would you agree with that? After what we've been through and how I've seen this administration react, not just on this issue, but on others, yes. And she says it's with good reason. Eventually, the leak of her name was traced all the way back to the vice president's office. One piece of evidence released by a special prosecutor, Dick Cheney's own copy of Joe Wilson's op-ed piece, 
with handwritten notes asking, have they done this sort of thing before? Send an ambassador to answer a question. Or did his wife send him on a junket? The Wilsons believe it was the beginning of a smear campaign. Why do you think the administration made such a big deal over who exactly sent your husband to Niger? Because this sets up this uh, erroneous charge of somehow there was nepotism involved. And therefore, if I could be accused of sending him, then what Joe reported on was invalid. And nepotism was the key charge top administration officials made when they leaked her name to reporters. The special prosecutor, Patrick Fitzgerald, found evidence there were four leakers. Deputy Secretary of State Richard Armitage, the Vice President's Chief of Staff, Louis Scooter Libby, President Bush's closest confidant, Carl Rove, and White House spokesman, Ari Fleischer. All avoided the most serious charges by claiming not to know she was undercover. But Joe Wilson says that's no excuse. It was a mafia-like tactic. And the idea of going after your family, even in Washington, was an outrage. Nobody went after Carl Rove's family. Nobody went after Scooter Libby's family. Uh, they went after my family. In all fairness, Carl Rove's wife doesn't work for the CIA. How do you know? Scooter Libby's wife doesn't How work do for the know? CIA. Do I, I don't know for sure, but yeah, I think it's a know. safe assumption. And we don't know what they did because nobody went after their families, and that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. You are still seething. Oh, I think uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm seething because it was a, first and foremost, it was a great betrayal of the national security of the country. In March 2007, Libby was convicted of perjury and obstruction of justice. Fitzgerald said that by lying, Libby had prevented him from getting to the bottom of the leak. And he said, quote, there is a cloud over the vice president and there is a cloud over the White House. A few months later, President Bush commuted Libby's prison sentence. When all is said and done, the top aides to both the president and the vice president leaked your name to reporters. Mm -hmm. Do you think President Bush was in on this? I don't know about that. But I, like most other Americans, saw President Bush say on TV that he would fire anyone from his administration found to be involved in the leak of my name. It turns out the president is not a man of his word. She hopes her book will allow her to clear the air. But even this, she says, has been a bitter fight. Redacted, <laughs> redacted, redacted, <laughs> redacted, redacted. And her manuscript has the scars to prove it. CIA censors blacked out 10% of the copy. Today, their shared office in Santa Fe speaks volumes. On one side sits the outspoken former ambassador, his walls adorned with pictures and mementos from a storied career. On the other, the walls are practically bare, reflecting the secret life of a 20-year veteran of the CIA. Our critics would love nothing more for us to go away and just be quiet and we won't give them that satisfaction. We have young children that one day when they understand more of what's happened and what's transpired, we want to be able to say to them, you know, we did our best and we, uh, we told the truth, we weren't perfect, but we tried to do the right thing.